last time on Lawful Stupid. Nothing, oh, uh, nothing goodness. really eventful. Nothing really eventful happened. Nope. That's true. Nothing happened. No Quiet, important character like day in the life. Anybody. I mean, the yeah. days are just dragging on. We had yeah. our uh, our beach slice of life episode where we just all hung out on the beach for an entire episode. And drink ginger really just... ale until our hearts exploded. We're really just spinning our wheels at this point, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. one thing did happen. Yeah. Hard. Alice got an axe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Alice got <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hold on. Alice got a new weapon. You got Shane. Is... Hold on a second. So, <laughs> as Willow is magical in nature, and I have, like, because I got shot by this uh, orange, like, reddish orange torrent magic. I now have like a half volcano arm, and when I at some point, and it's like a defensive mechanism that will show up later. Uh, that's pretty much it that happened, right? I don't, I don't remember much of anything else about beyond that. Oh, Shane, there was one thing. Hey Shane, you got a little something, and you like a, a little. Yeah, I like, I got like a little. Uh, well, I got a sick level spell. Okay. Um, because we leveled up, and that's What's it called? cool. Disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that one. Not that one. Oh, you, well, I cast a different spell. It's called, um, True Polymorph! And I'm a fucking dragon! Sometimes now. Uh, Dwayne and I have worked uh, extensively all through, every night, every weekend, okay, since the <sighs> Dwayne and I have been uh, figuring out how we're going to make this level, how we're going to make this balance. Uh, we got some stuff, so um, I can't just turn to a dragon all the time and hurt everything. Um, do it once per day, so you're at home like, damn it, Shane, so I'll just be a dragon! Um, get some balance and stuff. A little nerve to prepare some legendary action. Um, don't, don't, don't sit, don't at me and say that I'm not using my legendary <laughs> actions. I don't have any. Don't I'm, at me. I'm not a real dragon. I'm a dragon boy. I'm a dragon man. That's true. Yeah. France. The dragon That's true. Prince. Yeah. Season two. Go see. Drag so. Dragon print symbol. Yeah, Kristoff is now yeah. a fucking dragon. Atlas has a fucking lava axe that can magically <laughs> reappear. Rowan can teleport his hat to back to himself. <laughs> to be fair, who really wins? Who really wins? <laughs> so really, everybody got what they wanted. Yeah, everybody just wins. everyone's happy. Uh, everybody you can, wins. You, you can you could also got a thing. What? Where you can you have new spell slot economy. And use it to like heal people or just give your spell slots away. Yeah, which is effective because I don't use them. <laughs> That's true. Um, speaking of not using health skill slots, are we playing the game yet? Wayne, did we start? Yeah, we started. Yeah, we're already uh, playing. I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, Christoph. Jendo here. Hey, hi. How you doing? Uh, hey, excuse me, Rowan. Um, could you? I don't really want to talk about it. Could you heal me? Yes. Are you hurt? Yes. I heal you. Yeah, if you could do something ra about half. I'm about half. You're about half, okay. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 84, I'm feeling about a 40. Oh, in that case, um, I'll probably just cast an aura of vitality around us and just everyone can feel oh, a little bit you. better. And this oh, over the yeah, course of the course of a minute, every six seconds it heals two d six. Yeah, so an average of, of six over ten minutes, I'm gonna be. I think we can yeah, just say I'm good. Be fine. Yeah, we'll just call it even. Okay, fantastic. And then, mm -hmm. um, yes, we are on our way through the Ridge Scar Peaks, and we are going up to see Baron Stonebreaker. That is a thing that we are doing. Oh yes, you wanted me to. Um, yeah, and I pull out. Uh, and I reach in my pocket and I pull out a coin and I flick it one time and I catch it. And I go um. <clears throat> Avia, are you there? Uh, yes. Yes, what is it, Christoph? I'm, first of all, very glad to hear you're not torturing anyone. That's a great step for you. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, second of all, uh, I would like to say uh, something wonderful has happened and I don't have the words right now but I'll show you next time I see you it's oh you you must have saved the rest of the crew members of of the drunken son no oh that's I... too bad no I, I'm once again we mourn them daily and we have Tyndall here and that's better than we thought um you know I've heard some people have the wish spell but I guess 
Maybe one day. Maybe one day. I'm only a humble idiot wizard. Uh, so, but uh, it, it's a really great thing that's happened. I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. I don't have very many spells. I'm not a good spell boy. I mostly just shoot ice at things, and I need complicated spell work done. Is there any chance that you could send a message to Teresa for me? Uh, isn't... I'm sorry. Is that Henry's wife? Yes, Henry's wife, uh, Atlas's uh, adopted mother. Um, is, there, is there a way that... Uh, do I want to take have... the coin. I want to take the coin. Can I do that? It, does it, doesn't, it doesn't work for you. It's, I'm, I'm going to do it. Let him take the coin. Let him take I'm it. I'm going to take it anyways. Avia, hey, hey, uh, can you please tell Teresa I love her and, and I'm sorry that I haven't reached out to her sooner and, and, and I can't wait to see her and have some of those delicious treats that she makes. Silvery illuminescent wings burst forth from my back and I speak to you in a, in a dark and deep baritone. Hand me back the coin, Atlas. I, and you're giant, so I like, I'm trying to putting it in no, different I'm, no, places. No, I'm not, I, I want to clarify because we've, we've, we've tweaked some things. I'm not using my once a day dragon transformation. I just have my dragon wings early. Still so I putting have it wing. in random places, not sure where to give it back to you at. Put it in my hand, Atlas, Atlas hand. Thanks, Xavier. And, and then back to your hand. And then I return to normal. Um, are you, are you still there, Avia? Uh, yes. Uh, sorry about that. Are you able to cast the sending spell and can target? Yeah, I'm, I could try to cast the sending spell. Yeah, that shouldn't be an issue. Um, would you just say that Atlas is concerned for her? We are here with Atlas, and um, we've spoken to Henry, and he looks well, and we just want to inquire upon her... Uh, uh, well-being and life. Um, yeah, sure, I'll send her a things are okay message. Do you really need me to cast a spell to send her a we're all good kind of situation? Just tell her that Atlas is well and Henry is well and we want to make sure that she is also. Oh, so you want me to do a welfare check on Atlas's mom? Yeah, we just haven't heard from her, and we've heard some disturbing rumors from Ryle. You know, the guards, they're always up in my business. And uh, that Ryle said that he that she was murdered by the Mephis. That was how, along with the corruption from the Blade, he was able to, to turn such things against your cohorts. And uh, if you could, if this could put part of that to bed, I want this entire affair resolved. Uh, yeah, um, why don't I take care of that and just I'll I'll send you a message I'll hit you hit you up to this coin and um, once I hear back from her I thank you very much absolutely be well yeah you, you too Crystal and I put the coin back in my pocket and I said we are waiting word Atlas um, should hear back one way or another shortly he gets a big hug from me I just grab him up oh thank you Kristoff you're such a pal. I I wrap my arms uh, around his head. I assume I'm lifted into the air, and so they would be directly in front of me. So I just kind of wrap my arms around his head, bury his face deep in my bosom, my scaly, scaly bosom. Uh, of course. I love you, buddy. I pat him on the head once. I never let him go. <laughs> this is the kind of thing, in the podcast. <laughs> they just they stay together forever. Constant grapple. You have to strength check me every so often. Um, yeah, I can do that. You can do that. <laughs> this character's okay. broken. I hate him now. <laughs> no, I can't. I mean, I would have to. He'd have to burn. use his one day transformation to do that. But yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, I think if I just right transformed, now. you're not, you're not hugging, you're hugging like my toe. Yeah. Perfect. No big deal. No. I'm never letting go. I... <laughs> Climb on my back, Atlas. I'll carry you to freedom. <laughs> Uh, so as you guys are um, sitting there chatting about that, uh, the two uh, fear bogs, um, they say, uh, if if you're done talking to that coin, we can uh, we can lead you over to Rich Car Rich Car Towers. Perfect. Oh, just one one moment, and I'm going to reach into my bag and I'm going to unfurl a piece of aged parchment um, that I have the Wanderer's Way. Um, and I'm just going to confirm that the path that we are on was the safest, most direct route to um, Farron Stonebreaker. 
Sure, absolutely. Um... Yeah, man. Um, you guys are, uh, you guys are good. The, like, the path that you guys have been taking is, like, like, the map. I, so you pull up this map, right? And it's blank. And as you guys are, um, walking, it's kind of got, like, uh, this, like, these little dots that are going as you guys have been going. And this forest that you're walking through is starting to spread out. And you can see, like, you guys are making from where you met the fur bogs, fear bogs, um, <clears throat> to where the rich car towers are on the other side of the map. Um, looks like you're just kind of making like a direct line towards Fantastic. it. Just going yes, uh, let, let, and I roll it back up and I put it in my bag. Let us be off. Oh, did, did you have some important business to do with that paper? Seem to put it away real quick. I was just, oh, it's a map. I was just checking it. Oh, if you have a map, what you need us for? Because you can't detail every literal step and way upon the map and to know which, you know, paths along the cliffs could be dangerous or potentially worn by weather or erosion, you as locals would know better than us. I just know yeah. well. Yeah, Vi, he needs our help. <laughs> uh, okay, no need, to, no need to be fussy about it. Just wanted to see. And we thank you for your, all of your assistance in. and your time. Are yeah, there more of, of you, or just the two of you? Like, fear box? <laughs> like, do you or... live, is there like a community of, of, of fear bogs that live nearby, or are you uh, just... Yeah, there's a few more of us. We, uh, like, like I said, we don't, uh, consider ourselves Ridge Scar Peakians, or Ridge Scar Towerians, whatever they're calling themselves these days. Uh, but, you know, we live in the forest. Cool. All right, take us, uh, yeah, Rich Scott Peaks. That would be just perfect. Happy to help. Uh, and so you guys do, you, um, you guys travel, uh, for, you know, probably, uh, an hour and some change. Um, and, and you guys walk through this forest and and you kind of see something in the distance like peeking through the the tree branches um you, you can't really tell what it is at first because it's you're not getting the full picture um and then as you guys approach it you um the the two uh fear bogs in front of you kind of like put up their hands and they get you can tell they get they get they get quiet as they move, um, and they slowly um, approach like the edge of this forest line. And like, it's not like a full clearing, but you can tell what you guys have walked up on. Like the the woods are less thick, the trees are less thick, and as you guys uh, look forward, you see like um, a staircase that leads up on two different sides. And then on, um, it, this is like the base of an, of an object. So there's like two different staircases that you can see. And then one side's flat and you can only assume the other side is flat. So you can tell that there's two staircases leading up to this thing. And you can see that like from your vantage point, because you're looking at it from the side, it's like a curved piece of a uh, large stone that's like kind of building up. And as you guys like walk around, you see like this circle but it's not complete it's like uh the top left 25 to 30 percent of what would complete the circle is gone and you can tell there's like some um some like runic carvings around it on the around the edges um that's what you have approached i'm going to very quietly walk up to our two fair bog companions and i'll say um Quietly. Uh, Vi, what, what are we looking at? Well, thi well this is, uh, this is an arc gate. Um, and, well, to be honest, we've never seen it work, but we always go real slow around it. Um, there's rumors and legends among our people that these things can throw people through space and 
That doesn't sound great for us. Oh, I, I see it's a form of um, rapid travel of a great distance. Um, yes, we don't, we're don't. we already very near our location. We don't want any part of that either. Um, we should keep well abreast. I, I don't think there's anything like dangerous about it. We just, uh, we just respect it, you know? Understood, yes. And so, um, they don't, they don't, uh, like, go around the edge. They walk through, like, by the thing. But as you guys are walking, um, you guys can see this big, this big, like, monument-style thing. Um, and you just notice, like, the two of them are very reverent of it as they walk by. Um, and uh, when you guys do that, uh, you notice, um, that, uh, Graylin the Great... Uh, kind of stops at the the foot of the the monument and like starts walking up the staircase um and he's got uh, like go ahead i manifest my wings and fly up in front of him walking his path on the stairs but uh, yeah christoph what are you what are you doing uh, graylin these are dangerous magics that you know nothing about we should leave it uninterrupted uh, uh I, I wasn't gonna do anything. I was. You don't. You don't see one of these every day. I wanted to get a closer look. I just. This could teleport you thousands of miles away. Right, and they say it could throw me through time too. But, I mean, I really just want to get a closer look. Have you ever seen one of these in person? No, but if the locals are distressed by it, why would we not be? I don't know. They they live in the woods too, Kristoff. I who knows if what stories they've been told about this thing. Uh, if you must, um, but m wait until we're clear. To okay. And I, I drift back down and I continue along the path. Yeah. Um, so you guys uh, keep kind of heading out, and and you notice that he like uh, goes to the top of it, and um, he's like just taking notes. Like he's getting close to like the runes and stuff like that, um, but he's just like taking notes. Um, so uh, you guys continue on, um, Graylin, uh, Sans Graylin, and um, you hear Tyndall like as you guys continue go. So we're just like, leaving him back there? Uh, he's very stout and very sturdy. I'm sure he'll catch up. Uh, works for me. Maybe, maybe I'll tell the stories. You guys heard about the pirate that survived and his crew died? Me too. Which yes. one? We were there. It's very sad. Yeah, which one is that one? It was mine. It was no. mine. It was real bad. Oh yeah, we we heard that one. Some of us lived that one. Don't don't talk about it. It just makes it worse. Did I ever tell you about the time where my captain died? No, you did. Why are you tell me about that? It sounds like a better story than mine. Because so, oh. you survived. Oh, it's real sad. Sad times. Oh, that's a great story. You, you should write books. Did I tell you about the time I became captain? When did you become captain? What, you remember when Wynn sent us that thing and I got that boat? And then I was a captain for a little while. You had a boat? It, it was a crow's nest. I had uh, one crew member. It was, oh, it was uh, me. It was a dragon. My, my crew member was a dragon. And we oh. sailed, this, they sailed this river for approximately 15 minutes. And then we crashed to the bottom of a waterfall and oh. wind took it from me. Well, yeah. okay. Well, we, we didn't. We, so most of us here have been captains, so we can relate to one another. So everybody but Kristoff has been a captain. Yeah, so I mean, being a dragon's pretty cool, but yeah, not yeah, all of but us have been not dragons. Captain. Look at yeah, me. exactly. Look at me. yeah, I'm the captain. No, no, now. that makes sense. Um, captain's club meeting. Captain's club yeah, meeting. Yeah, come together. <laughs> okay. Great. I guess I'll just manifest my great silver wings and just you know command my terrible no, eyes. I want to put my, my hat presence. on to Kristoff. Like you're a captain of my heart, and you're the prince of mine. Let's go. Mm. Then you magically resummon it back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I snap my fingers to summon it back. It didn't. It didn't fit well in my head anywhere because there's like horns and shit. Yeah, it was all lopsided and sad. I'm gonna shout to Graylin. Graylin, 
Yeah, you don't you don't get a response, Atlas. But I mean, we're still like within. We can see I mean, you see guys him, right? continue forward. No, you can't really see him like very well because you guys kept We've walking. On. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe we sh we should wait on him. I mean, he's yeah, he's he's adventuring with us, and he's but he's still on familiar territory. All right, let's go back then. We'll just go back and get him. It just and then seems like you guys like turn about face, and uh, um, uh, Beryl says, uh, uh, "Whoa, uh, guys! Uh, I'm sorry, guys, y'all going the wrong way." Yeah, we're going to go back and check on that guy. All right, all right, I guess we're bye. We're, they're going the other way. Oh, yeah, we can get there real fast. That's the wrong direction. They're going for the guy. And uh, they like turn around and like very confused by the whole situation because they're trying to lead you the other way and they're not the super brightest people in the world. But just just wait here. We'll be right back. If you say so. Uh, yeah. So you guys head back to the um, dark gate. And I assume we see a Graylin shaped hole of, or pile of ashes. You see a giant red dragon. No. Um, I knew it. Shit. Knew it. It's, well, it's here. time to. <laughs> <laughs> it's morphin' time. Crack, crack uh, the knuckles. Yep. Dragon Zord, it's me. It's, it's me, and now everybody get on me and pilot me. Um, no, no, like, so you guys, you guys return to the arc gate. If you, Rowan doesn't get a dagger flute, I'm leaving the podcast because I would, I would love a dagger flute. I don't know. I feel like he could just take his gun and play it, right? Like we can dagger. modify his gun to be a. <laughs> So you uh, snow the barrels. Just please let's not put guns in our mouths, okay? <laughs> Dip it in peanut butter first. You hate to taste it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Ooh, uh, like some jelly. So you guys, jam. yeah, you guys go back to the Ark Gate, and um, uh, Grayland's nowhere to be found. Yes, I kind of figured he's dead to us. Come on, guys. I will. I will run over to the area that he was standing in. Don't do that. Why? Bye, Atlas. Bye forever. I miss you. For the record, I'm just riding my elk the entire time. I just want to roll a uh, uh, perception, see if, I, if there's anything he's laying around. Uh, I'm so he super was, hard. You see he was at the top of the arc gate, like at the gate. And that's so you want to go up there and do a perception check? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you, you run up there and um, you do a perception check. Roll the check. I'm not going in after him. 14. Uh, and roll me a dexterity segment there. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so uh, with a 14, um, you can like see that there's like nothing necessarily like out of place. Like you, it's not like you see a scuffle or any like burn marks or um, it just looks like it was before. Um, you, you really don't see anything specifically to like tip you off to whatever happened or why he's not suddenly here. I'm going to hold well, my action to dispel magic on the gate if it activates. Okay, you do that. Well, it looks like he... I don't know, maybe he found something more interesting going that way, so let's... Let's, let's, just, get to, let's just get to the top of this place. There's so many things yeah. that keep stopping us. Let's go. Yeah, we got, we got him. Guy. He'll be fine. Let's he, had, he had like 20 names. He'll be fine one way or the other. Yeah. Any man with that many names. 20 names, 20 lives. That's what they say. Let's is go. It, is that what they say? <laughs> It's a very yeah, famous Salentian let's, let's, yeah. let's go. Let's go find King Boomy and Bossing Say. Let's yes, go. Let's spend, a th let's spend the whole rest of the episode talking about it instead of going to the fucking tower where we're supposed to go. Let's sprint. I fly there. Bye. I'm riding on my yeah. elk. Let's go. Full sprint. Ah. So you guys, uh, you guys travel the rest of the way through the forest uh, uh, pretty much un unimpeded. Uh, and I think the, the whole time, like, Vi and Beryl are like, bickering back and forth about like which way is the best way like every time there's like a left and a right like to get around like an obstacle they're, like they're arguing the whole time every every time i pull up my map and just go <clears throat> and point in the right direction <laughs> yeah and sometimes they like follow your direction sometimes they like argue about like whoever's right it's like faster um and so like you guys you still make great time uh I mean, you can choose to argue with the locals about it or not, or just no. I, I, abs I absolutely. I so like I will look at the map, and if it's two different paths that lead to the same place, and one's like safer and faster, I just go that way. I go. I'm going to scout ahead, and I go that way. Sure. <laughs> um, I meet him wherever the, the roads link up. 
Yeah. Uh, so you guys do that, and um, uh, you, you guys find yourself at the base of uh, Rich Scar Towers. And as you look up, um, you see uh, this like long path. The, Along a like, ridge covered in scars. <laughs> that ends in a um, like a fortress that's like nestled into the mountain itself uh, with two towers. Um, but the path leading up, Christoph, you you don't remember it being this way. Um, there are like uh, heaps and rooks and other like uh, battlements that have been like put into place and then there's gate after gate after gate it has been heavily fortified um compared to the last time you were here um you remember there being a gate about halfway up and a couple towers like outpost towers near those gates but um it was not nearly as um fortified as it is today all right boys uh here's the plan we're approaching uh the tower now uh, we are going to move with confidence and grace, uh, and we are going to not have any hands on any weapons. We're here on a diplomatic mission. We must come as envoys of peace, and if anything happens, let me do the talking. Know these people. God, lips sealed. Dog. I mean, unless you have something interesting to say. This place is pretty fortified. To be in the mountains. Oh, I anticipate it has something to do with the Ford army on their border. That would so make sense. We have to fight your own people. No, we're not going to have to fight anyone. We're the to rats. be clear, these these aren't my people. These are people of the Rich Scar Peaks. Um, they're not mine, but I have visited them before. I know them pretty well. Um, no, I mean, but they are, I'm assuming, protecting against Silencians, right? Is that, that on one side, the Silencian, on the other side, it's who? Um, I don't know Svan and the army that he brought from Yori. Yeah, no, it's going to be fine. We're not going to have any armies. There's not going to be any fighting. We're just going to be real fucking chill. That's what we're here for. So let, let us hail the, the first gods we see and we'll go from there. First gods? Oh, fuck. So as you guys, uh, as you guys like discuss that, um, there is uh, the Vi. Um, she uh, she says, uh, "Y'all, y'all, uh, y'all have fun, uh, but this is kind of where we part ways." Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. And I reach into my my pouch and I pull out five gold pieces for each of them. And I place them into their hands as I shake them heartily and I say, thank you so much for your assistance. Uh, you can tell, like, that's kind of, like, strange for them, but not, uh, people not to, like, uh, fear bulls not to be rude. They don't, like, say anything about it. They just bow and uh, they give you, they both give you thanks. And, um, but as you're, like, they're walking away, you can tell they're just kind of like, what do we need this for? Um. Oh, I... I'm terribly sorry. I should have known. Um, and I hand them instead um, magic stones. <laughs> no, <Some magic laughs> I hand them beans. the great magic beans. Uh, no, I hand I hand them uh, each um, copper wire that will explode later. <laughs> no, I hand them each uh, uh, one of my rations uh, oh, as okay. well as um, my hate to part with this my uh, wine skin full of ginger ale. Ooh. I say to, uh, to, to keep you hale and hearty on your journey. So uh, they, apologies. Yeah, they give you the gold back, and they're way more excited about this. Um, uh, uh, take uh, take uh, inspiration, uh, Shane. I already uh, have reading it. the locals. Well then, I just have it. Hey, got know two. that you're a good dude. Uh, Thank you. And uh, so uh, you guys are getting prepped, and you hear Captain Tyndall. <coughs> All right, boys. <coughs> Ready? Sober now? Oh god. N- no, not close. even close. Oh, are no. you a manageable drunk? Mama now? always says sober is as sober does. And he like tips his hat. Nope. Falls over face first. God I love him. You don't you don't say any words, Tyndall. None He's of the don't matter. 
Yeah, uh, enough. Uh, and then we we go forward our yeah, brave you, adventuring you band. You uh, you you hail a guard, um, and uh, you you notice like Tyndall is like as like tight as possible. Like when he's walking, you know that like overcorrected. That's such a good walk. descriptive word. He's just tight as possible. Tight. I love oh, it. <laughs> muscles are glistening. Like a like a t- tiger. Tight like a toy Like a toy like Yeah, a toy. he's like. You know when like someone's just like glistening and it's just it for him it's just sweating alcohol. Um, yeah, he smells so, and so good. You guys, you guys hail the the first guard, I assume. Um, I second, I bow deeply. Guard. No, second come guard. On. <laughs> I'm, gonna watch I'm first talking first to you, guard. <laughs> you I'm no. the second no, 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 no. I talk to the second string guard and then second string only. He's hungry or he wants it. Yeah. Um, no, I I bow deeply as I do. I remove my mask. Uh, hail tip of the hat the most and, uh, respect you'll you get, get from a, rowan you get a response this uh from like a, a, a bigger orc and he says uh, uh hey on and well match my dude uh, i like to cut uh, your jib too yes 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 sir uh my name is christoph shindo formerly of silence um, I have no papers to confirm my pedigree, but if you know me, you should know by sight. And I kind of gesture to my scales and general disposition. And, um, he, uh, huh. And, uh, what are you doing here? I sent word ahead, um, to Farron Stonebreaker. I, I hope that the word has come back to you as well. Um, that I, I mean to break bread with him. Hey, Carl. You got the, you got the book? No, no, not that book. The book with all the people's names in it that's supposed to be here. We could just run right now. They never even... No, we don't. I we're we're being I'm, cool. Oh, okay. Dip, we're diplomats. Cool. There's a closed gate. But yeah, you're right. I just give Atlas gate. a hug like it's okay. We've got this. A lot of hugging going on. It's a little bit strange to the people observing. And uh, and you see this this orc like pull up this book, and he's like flipping through pages. Wait a second. He's he's a an orc, like a full blood orc. Yeah. I mean, I want to roll an insight check because I don't believe that he can read. Um, but I'll let it pass. I'm kidding. It's a joke. Oh, hold on a second there. Uh, excuse me. W- what is your name? My name? Yes, you are the one in charge. This is your station, correct? This is my station. Yes, sir. So, the the method through which you determine if people are allowed to this gate is written down in a book. How do you communicate in your land? How did you... How Who... <laughs> how do people tell you to put a name in that book. Where does that come from? Well, this book comes from the castle. So the whole book moves. The, the whole bu- they, they give us a new book every day for expected visit. Why are you questioning the system? You're a visitor. I, I just wonder, it seems very odd. You have very nice uh, structures and battlements here. It seems very uh, forward thinking. He but- like leans forward and looks at like this like very war based thing and not like for appearance at all it's like yeah okay my, my, my friend here who I journey with is a is a master tactician and um, defensive specialist so he can see the the war worthy and noteworthy uh, battlements that you have here and it processes are his business he refines them he improves them and ensures that uh, people are kept safe that's his role um so that that is the, it is a professional curiosity and nothing more. I assure you. Uh, go ahead and roll a persuasion check, first off. I would love to. You got it, my dude. You Get got it right boy. here. Uh, twenty-three. Yeah, yeah. Nope. He's persuasive 29. as fuck. Even and he yeah. says, uh, "Uh, okay. Anyways, uh, Kristoff." Uh, Shindo, formerly of Simon. Uh, Carl, does that say Kristoff? I nod knowingly, yes. Carl says 
That's that's what's written here in the book. Um, all right. Well, we'll we'll get you a we'll get you a dispatch of guards to come escort you up. Y'all sit tight. Oh, th- thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, you guys notice one thing you uh, do notice with your passive perceptions is that like on each side of the gate, like there are now like two orcs each, just like paying attention to you guys. Can I hang out with them? No, 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 they're like up on the battlements. Oh, can I make eye contact? I mean, you can make eye contact. You have that ability. You wink at him. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, Rowan, do you, do you have the ability to create light? Uh. Any sort of spell that does that? No, I have dark vision. Why would I need light? I'm just curious. Nope. Um. Does anyone have a torch? Yes. Can you, t- can you pulls light? out a torch. Interesting. It smells of whiskey. Strong. You've been drinking the torch lacquer. That's fine. Uh, I light it, <laughs> and I said I plant it in the ground, and then I st- so it's it's casting light on the wall, um, or actually beyond the wall, uh, and I start using both of my hands and a mage hand to do a shadow puppet show for the guards that are watching us. Okay. Yeah, you do that. Uh, Roy performance. Sure. Oh, I want to help with that. I want to do fucking Shadow Puppet sure. with my mage hand, give too. Him that, give him the eight. Yeah, do it with advantage. He's aiding you. Perfect. Yeah! It's 15. Okay, the second one's a two, so 15 plus my performance is a score of 520. Dirty 20. Okay, dirty 20. I, bro, I was like, 520? How do you have, like, plus 400 to your performance? Yeah, I, mean, I have like, plus I know 400. This true I, 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 rolled, I rolled a 120. And then I got a plus yep. 400. Uh, yeah, so you like, uh, you're like doing like this little shadow puppet show, and that goes on for, uh, I don't know, probably 15, 20 minutes. But, and the guards like don't seem like upset by it, except for one guard who's just like into it. Like he's yeah, just and, like and, good. into I'm doing, it. Just for him. I'm doing voices. I'm doing thaumaturgy yeah. to do sound effects. I'm like, it's a full product. It's actually a full production of Macbeth. It's like a oh, full. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. Predates some fucking. Well, Actually, Rowan no. It plays the part Hamlet, of Hamlet, okay. Hamlet would probably make better sense, given my backstory personally. That's mm, true. Maybe you should do Romeo and Juliet. Uh, anyways, um, the the gate like opens and um, it like kind of splits sideways, like or it it opens uh, left to right. You know what I mean? From the middle. Sure. Um, instead of raising up. No, no, no. It's from the middle, but it like recesses yeah, in the walls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and um. A combination of uh, dwarves and orcs come out to so greet dorks. you all. Dorks. Yeah, it's they're commonly known as dorks. It's I don't know where you're laughing. This is a very normal thing. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, and uh, one of the dwarves uh, approaches Kristoff uh, and like puts out his hand, and he says. Um, I, I'm Lieutenant Stonefoot. It's nice to meet you, Kristoff. One moment, sir. And may angels carry thee to thy rest, sweet prince. And then the, the show, and then I bring the lights down, and the show is, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and then I, I, I turn back around and I go, Lieutenant, it is a pleasure to meet you. I am Kristoff Shindo, and I extend my hand to shake. And he, uh, he obviously shakes your hand and he says, uh, we we were expecting you, Kristoff, but you it seems you have brought friends. I do not travel without my companions, my retinue. I I, I thought I had mentioned as much uh, in my missive. Uh, this is uh, Rowan Legato, a bard of quite some renown. You may have heard of him and his uh, great purple fire. Hello. Uh, um, nice to meet you. <laughs> I shake his hand. That's good to meet you. And this this is uh, my Star Wars companion, uh, Atlas Feria. He is a uh, master tactician um, with a specialization in, in defensive maneuvers, um, a graduate of the Battleborn College, and one of the finest smiths you will ever have the pleasure of meeting. And uh, this this dwarf, like, uh, shakes your hand. I assume you shake his hand. Mm-hmm. I return. And he, like, shakes your hand with two hands, and he says, Would you happen to be... Henry's son, or related to Henry Ferry? 
He knows your He's dad. Our father. Yep. Oh, how is he? Preparing for whatever may come. Hopefully, some peaceful transactions here. Good. He means good. That means good. Oh, well, I, I hope he's well. He, he makes some beautiful weapons. So I hear. Oh, yeah. The, the apple does not fall far from the tree. I assure you. Um. So I, I, I apologize if I didn't mention. Oh, and of course, this is um, this is Rinwick Tindall. He is a drunken vagabond. If I'm going to be honest with you. Wow. But he's, All right. Is. is yeah, yeah. But he's the, uh, he's the drunken vagabond that you want by your side if you have to ever get on step step foot off dry land and onto the sea. Yeah, he's our wild card. That's he's our not he's, true. he's our he's our I'm wild there. card. Ace in the oh, sleeve. He, he's our tr- he's our trunk. No, he. Uh, I'm a you know spade of the horse. What Christmas? We, we, we owe him a debt, um, and he is journeying with us uh, as we continue our journey beyond your borders, uh, hopefully. Um, this Yes, this is my retinue. Um, we are here to meet with Farron. Um, it's been so long since I've seen him. I hope that he is well. He's quite well. Uh, I hope you understand we will uh, escort you up to the top and uh, be with you the whole time. You can understand. Trying times. Oh, of course. Of course. We'll we'll be glad of the company, honestly. Um, do you do you gentlemen enjoy uh, music? Do you like music? Do you like stories? Yes. Yeah. Well, some of us like stories, but we Excellent. yes, I do. I love it all. Um. So yeah, you guys uh, head up. Um, yeah, I I I I, I kind of do another bow and I put my mask back on and I gesture to Rowan like the stage is yours. Yeah, I definitely play music and tell stories the entire way up. It's having a ball. Yeah, um, so it's it's a it's a longer walk uh, up this like battlement, up this like path. So it's like probably probably just like an hour and a half just walking, because um, it's like steep and you're curved. And like as you walk up there, uh, Devin or Atlas, you especially notice like the amount of battlements. Like you can see like oil pots. You can see like like these devices that you can tell they're like lances that have been like embedded into the walls but they have some type of like mechanical function going on um whatever they were fighting they were worried about it um go ahead uh, i don't want to say so atlas is for whatever reason the the the, pe- the orcs at the front gate rubbed him wrong he is not liking this situation at all the people, the environment, it's just not not liking. So he's gonna be hanging back a lot. Just kinda of taking it all in. Okay. Um so uh Rowan, I just I wanna I wanna taste the the music or, or mm. maybe a snippet mm. of the story on the way out. And the story is definitely gonna be about a boy getting to know his father on his deathbed called Big Fish. Oh, my heartstrings! Oh, I know, I love it so much. Nice. Uh, yeah, so um, you, you tell that story on the way up and I think um, one of the dwarves and one of the orcs are kind of like tearing up. Um, like, But they're like trying to hide it as they're marching. They're suddenly like little on the further on the left and the right, you know, like breaking off Frank a little oh, yeah. bit. Um, you see one of the dwarves like put on his helmet all the way, even though he's like <laughs> had it like raised up the whole time. Like, um, but it is, to- it is happy because he knew all along that he was a big fish. Yeah, I, they still cry like little girls. They just hide it. I did. Too. Not that that's like a bad thing, but like no, we all it, did. We all did it. it. In their, uh, like, world, their, uh, what am I looking for? Culture, I guess? Um, so you guys, uh, come up on the gates of, uh, the Rich Scar Towers, and, um, you, I mean, Atlas, if you, like, like I said, I cannot stress enough, like, especially the closer you get, like, they are preparing for something. 
Um, uh, Christoph, you, this, this like looks familiar, very fond, um, like memories come back to like this, uh, gateway. Uh, I'm assuming that it looks very different from what I remember. It does. It it's does like, in the sense that like there are more battlements, but the front of yeah. it still looks the same. Like the, it has the same archway. It has these uh, beautiful cobblestone, like um, larger stones, but it's still cobblestone uh, lining the front and kind of going over the arch. Um, and there's dwarven script, and dwarven like script. it's almost like every like they did a good job of cobbling together dwarven and orcish script um like their different versions to like like give a more welcoming um uh like phrase but it's so garbled to somebody who doesn't understand like both um but if you were to understand both it would it's like a warm felt message from uh the uh, excuse me the owners of the ridge scar towers um so uh yeah and you remember that um uh the stonebreakers um they weren't always like uh, war mongers right like once um farron and his wife um oh gosh what was her name um Farrah. uh batul uh yes got together um their the combat and the the warmongering of the rich car peaks had died down uh, quite heavily. Um, and uh, Lieutenant Stonefoot says, uh, "Well, if you're ready, of course, please." And uh, you guys, you guys m- make your way into um, the the rich scar towers as uh, as this big metal gate with like these heavy stone blocks are it or is lifted up um revealing uh, go ahead one thing that i'll say is that uh christoph the way that he moves now is to anyone who is paying attention or with high enough passive perception would know it's very just acutely different his movements are more sure um he's very uh his tail even um, is more fluid. It kind of swishes behind him almost uh, as a part of his body, kind of more serpentine as he walks. Um, he's always moved with the careful, kind of like cautious, trained grace of the nobility. But now something's changed and he moves with a natural grace. It's something that is, it, he's not putting on airs. He's not trying. He's just able to fluidly move and kind of own each step um and and really embody something greater than his appearance Rowan has a natural smile at this yeah. like i'm in his element uh I, I, is this gate still lifting i think i want to like call yeah yeah it's still and Rowan back. uh guys can I, can I talk to you for a second of course as long as you need uh, i'm sure you gentlemen have noticed the level of care they have taken to secure these peaks. I noticed, yes. It does uh, not resemble the, the walk that I've taken many times before. Dwayne, quick question. As we were coming up, we realized like this 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 protection is facing obviously down into like the Holbeck area. Mm-hmm. Is it also like can we see that this same amount of care has been taken for the backside, or does it look like it's more no. open? It is it is a hundred percent all these armaments have been repelling people coming up there it is not the reverse now obviously it's secure but it is it's, just it's, not. A, it's a sheer cliff face on the other side right there's only one approach and it's this one there's the one approach to this rich car yeah. towers so it's, it's not it's, that it's a sheer like people could make it up it but it would be like it would take forever and be they would be noticed well before they could and, get there. and pretty easily repelled by the natural defenses by the natural defenses yeah and there's like no like built like they have not built any like paths into their fortress other than this one right and all the natural ones that they have found they have shut so yeah yeah it seems like they've taken enough care that they want to stop of course potentially us the forces coming through but it seems they will wipe us all out 
we we don't stand a chance, but it seems that same care is not taken towards silence. I, I just want us to be careful in that they may be in the pocket of your brother. They have natural defenses on that side, Atlas. I, I appreciate your concern. Um, they are prepared for war, more so than I've ever seen them, and they're defensive people as it is. The, no one has been able to take British Scar Tower since it was founded. Um, it is the epitome of what defense and security is. Um, we're walking into the lion's den, in a way, and we would not be able to do so if we were not granted entry. We are guests, and if for whatever reason, if they choose to revoke that, we shan't be making the journey again, not without tragic and great loss of life. That's why we cannot fail here. That's why we must be successful. Because if we walk as friends up this path and through to silence, we will be successful. If we march up this path, we will fall. That's true. That's I, the thing. It's it's yeah. It's it seems like they're more seems worried so about outward threats instead of the inside threats of silence. Right, Atlas? No one's made him. Uh, yeah, you think you hit the nail on the head? No one. No one's made a move yet. No one is... So, this force that Svan has gathered has not been in position long enough to do all of this, to create all of these defenses. These have existed for some time. This is the only way to attack the Rizgar Tower, this path that we just journeyed, whichever side it faces. If you want to take this tower, you have to march this road. You have to come along this path. And you are not going to do it while they are on alert. It's not going to happen. Not without great force of influence and great loss of lives. Why don't we have Svan? Uh, don't they have some kind of relationship, he and Farron, especially if they were here long ago? S no. Svan, I have a relationship with Farron. Svan is resolved to war. He wants to march upon silence and he wants to kill my people, Atlas. I saw it in his heart, I saw it in his eyes. He sees Farron as an obstacle that is in his way to get to whatever he feels must be rooted out of silence. We, alone, are the ones who want peace in this. And we have we to do that. We cannot fail. We, we need have the to peace. ensure that we need the peace, yes, Rowan. We need it. We will. Mm. We are the only ones on our side. There are two opposing sides of the conflict and us in the middle. We are in the most dangerous position, but we are also in the most influential position. And if we do what I know that we can do, we can save both and save everyone. I, I don't think Spawn is right for wanting to march through here with such violence, but I just can't help feel that something's a little off here too. I just, I just, I, I know you're a man of, of, of royalty and people should respect you. I just want you to be careful. It's been a long time since you've been here. And maybe there's just some things we don't know. If, if anything is untoward, we will make a polite excuse. We will leave. We will not lose our lives here. It will not happen. We will di diplomatically do what we have to to leave. And if it comes to it, I will arrange for your removal and I will remain. I'm more valuable to them than you, unfortunately. It's the, the one time I'm more valuable than your strength or your heart. I hate to break it to you, Kristoff, but uh, you ain't leaving. And I look over to Rowan. We ain't leaving. It's true. Yes, well. Hold Atlas on the shoulder. But it's all right. Compassion. It's going to get us through this right now. I, I straighten up. I said, well, I'll just throw you out on your ass. I'm a fucking dragon, so... I could be a dragon, too, and I polymorph myself into a fucking dragon. Do not do it. Do not... Don't you dare. Do not no, don't I'm you just dare. kidding. I can't do it. So, so... You did it once. Uh, so, yes. Uh, things are shaky, and I know that you have every right to be uneasy, but we're going to do this. I have faith. We've got this. We'll bring peace. We'll erase everything. It'll be fine. Oh. We will. And so with that, you guys, uh, you guys head towards the the open 
archway and as you as you cross over the threshold uh, a couple things happen one you feel this like intense heat um you can feel that like just be inside it, you it went up 20 30 degrees um and the other thing is you uh christoph you you hear avia's voice um and she says christoph What did she I, say, Dwayne? Are you there? Mm-hmm. I just, I just say, mm-hmm, kind of nonchalantly. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because mm-hmm. you don't want to give away what's going on. Um, yeah. And uh, she says, you're never going to believe this. And that's what we're going to do. Next time, I love this stupid son of a bitch! Son of a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I fucking knew it. Yeah. God damn it, Dwayne. You act like I'm not already drinking. And then this happens, and I'm like, we get to play another session and see what's going on, but everyone else, they have to suffer for seven days. Yeah, uh, confirmed. Uh, yeah, man, uh, so thanks for listening to this episode. Yeah, I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, we're um, getting back into it. We had a lot of guest episodes, and I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the Oh, I'm so into this heat. right now. I'm feeling the moment. I'm, um, I'm, loving, I'm loving what's going on. Loving things. I love loving the story, and I, I'm very excited to play again. So, without further ado, let's roll for humanity so we can move on, shall we? Yes. Yeah. This is for. Whoa, 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 Shane. Sorry. When you Sorry. roll that roll for humanity, I assume you're using your your dice that you got from the endless bag of dice from critical dice. Uh, you know, I'm actually just using my critical dice that I already have from them. I don't. I haven't received a critical dice shipment yet, to be honest. Um, just because the way that you know recording, I I, I will have received. Yeah. Maybe two by the time this episode comes out, but now I'm rolling just a regular critical die. Yeah, and uh, with a critical cool dice, uh, you can get an endless bag of dice. You just use the coupon code Lawful Stupid, and you get your first one free. That one's on yeah, us. Yeah, it's it, it costs seven hundred seven hundred seven hundred and fifty pennies a month. Seven dollars and fifty cents. It costs every month for you to get dice delivered directly to your door. Brand new, shiny beautiful perfect dice for you to hoard as a dice dragon that you get no muss no fuss forever and never runs out it's one of the most powerful wondrous items in the land <laughs> of um earth um the endless bag of dice and use that coupon code like Dwayne said lawful stupid and you'll get your first bag of dice your first month totally on the house our gift to you for being such beautiful special children oh god i need more dice Free, 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 free. We all need more dice. You can you could have a, a Olympic size swimming pool full of dice. You know what you have? Not enough dice. Not enough dice. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I will go ahead and make this roll for humanity. Yeah. Now if I, now it's bad. It's gonna be a bad review, huh? No. It's an eighteen. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Real good. Eighteen. And because this, we are now uh, in the month of March, um, I can say that right? No, wait, no way. This is the month of April. Uh, now that we're in the month of April, I can say that our um, new charity of the month is going to be the Harry Potter Alliance. And if you're not familiar with the Harry Potter Alliance, they are too freaking cool. They are nerds with a purpose doing great things for our world. I will list off for you a few of their achievements that they have completed recently. Hit me with they that raised list. over $123,000 for partners in health and sent five cargo planes of life-saving supplies to Haiti. They donated over 250,000 books across the world through their Osseo Books campaign. A partnership with Public Knowledge brought over 20,000 fans and online video creators together for net neutrality. The use of broad cultural messaging link the Hunger Games with real life inequality and like just so much more. They have amazing individual campaigns that you can participate in, that you can support. Um, let me get some of those real quick off the top here. Um, so they have campaigns like Dumbledore's Army Fight Back, where um, when Hogwarts and the world are under attack, they fight back in your community and push back against bigotry and hate. Um, the Wizard Rock the Vote 2018. Um, they, uh, they have the Osseo Books campaign, like I managed, which provides campaigns. Um, they have A World uh, Without Hermione, which is where they do their best to make sure that girls and women have their say in the classroom and in the industries that are important. Yes. Um, 
they have Neville fights back, which is another one where they um, destroy some Horcruxes, which are uh, bigotry and hate in communities. Um, they just so many amazing campaigns. I can't even list them all, um, but you can find it at thehpalliance.org. Um, and just a really worthy cause for your uh, donation dollars. Yeah, it is. And I love I love that there's so many different like fronts that they're just fighting at the same time. Like it's it's great. I love that. It's a lot going on. No matter what you're into, they probably do something that you support. Exactly. And it's it's refreshing. It's it's nice to have um, a role for humanity that on different levels at the same time. And yeah, I really appreciate that. I like that. And bring it into, you know, reading as well. Like, God, just, it kind of hits all the notes at the same time. I'm really proud of this one. That's a good one. It really is. Well, uh, I, we should uh, also talk about Drawcon. We have that it, it, as we record now. It's even closer, boys. Uh, July 12th through 14. It's going to be Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'll uh, be doing Jollicon. We want to thank uh, everyone who has already gotten tickets and supporting us and people who are going to be a part of Nerd Asylum. And uh, those guys reaching out for us. We're really extremely appreciative of them for even considering us. So if you want to support us, uh, you can jump online. Uh, we'll have the link for tickets in this episode. Dwayne? Is it Dwayne? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Dwayne is the, the podcast wizard. Make it happen. Uh, but yeah, yeah, July 12th to 14th. So Get your tickets now. I don't want to say that I'm going to be wearing yeah. an apron, but I probably will be. I'm a dungeon mom forever. I'm bringing it'll snacks. Be, it'll probably be pink and floral, if I assume correctly. Um, I mean, maybe. We're yeah, going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be hanging out after the shows, after the events, after the panels, and just having a great time in Fort Wayne. Um, and then I, we, what's coming up even sooner than Drawlicon that we can't fail to mention, because at the time of this episode's release, it is in 30 Next days... Month. It is in one month. It is it is four lawful stupid episodes away. Three now because this is the first one. Oh God, uh, we're talking about in Max Mankind. In Max uh, so Mankind, our charity drive in May. We have already partnered with so many people that we're lining up to do this amazing challenge with us, um, and expect to hear more about how you can participate, how you can get T-shirts, how you can um, potentially enter to win some prizes. Um, it's going to be a lot, and it's coming up very soon. So keep an ear and an eye out. One. Exactly. One year I will say. There's bye. 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 Oh shit! We're already going to the bye. Damn, that was fast. You are great. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me happy.